What's going on NEM crew? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be changing wheel bearings on the Datsun. Let me show you how I do it. Don't worry guys, this is really simple, really easy. Just watch this 10 minute video if you guys are unsure and we'll take you through the process. The first thing you want to do is get the car up in the air, take the wheels off. We're doing the front, so we're going to take the front wheels off. As you can see here, there's a little bit of play in the wheel bearing and that's why we're getting this done. All right, so the rotor is behind the hub. So this is where the wheel bolt's on. This is the hub here. The rotor sits behind. It's actually bolted to the hub. It's a two-piece system. Um, it's fine. It works. The only issue is that when you want to change the rotor, you have to take the hub out. Um, so that's fine. We'll do that. Caliper needs to come off. There's two 17 mil bolts. The issue lies is the flex line is up here. You guys can't see that. Flex line is up here on this side, but flex line doesn't go to the caliper. Flex line goes to the strut itself, and then there's a hard line going from the strut to the caliper, meaning to take this caliper off, I need to take off the hard line, meaning brake fluid is gonna go everywhere, and I'm gonna have to breed, breed. Yeah, let's breed the, bla the brakes. I'll have to bleed the braking system. So that's just another step that's involved. Isn't the most thought out system I've seen. Clearly they've, there's a flaw in this design, but it's okay. We can do it, we'll survive. So let's start by taking off the caliper and then we'll get this hub off. As I mentioned, the caliper is held on by two 17 mil bolts. We'll get that out. We're gonna take the hard line off with a 10 mil. A line wrench is a little bit easier, but any 10 mil should work. Wrench, that is. Now that we got the caliper off, we can take the dust cap off for the axle nut. There's a cotter pin that's got to come off. And there's also this other little piece in there um, that covers the axle nut itself or the hub nut itself. So take that little piece off, take off the axle nut. Now this shouldn't be really tight. The spec, torque spec isn't too crazy, so it should be pretty, uh, pretty loose. Now you're gonna take, there's a washer off and then the outer bearing portion. And once we get the hub and rotor off, as I mentioned earlier, it's a two piece system. So there's four bolts that will allow you to take the rotor and the hub um, and separate them. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually feeling there's some notches. So we have to take the races out and the seal out. So there are notches on either side of the race of the bearing. And as I'm, I'm just feeling for that little notch and using a punch and just punching out the race. So that is the inner race. We're gonna flip the hub around now, feel for those notches, and I'm going to just bang out the, um, the outer race. Now this is a pretty greasy job. Now I'm just trying to get the grease out of here and we're gonna start fresh, put everything new. You can reuse the grease if it looks good. In my case, I don't know when this was last changed. So now it's all cleaned up and we have something fresh to start with. Now we have to press in the races. I'm starting with the outer race here. Used a little bit of grease to allow it to go in a little bit smoother. Now I don't have the proper tool for this, so I'm just using various size sockets, pieces of wood, just trying to make something work. Now this is also to show you guys that you don't need crazy specific tools. You do want to take your time and make sure you don't damage the race. So the inner or the outer one went very well. Now the inner one um, was a little bit more difficult, but with some finesse, it went in and we got it sorted. Make sure that the races are perfectly seated. At this point, we are going to fill up the hub with grease. We want to make sure that there's plenty of grease in there and you'll be good to go. Now we just put the bearing in on the, or the inner bearing in. Now the bearing has been packed. I packed it. If you guys want to see the 
process of packing a bearing, there'll be a link in the description. Check it out. Now we're going to put the rear seal in. Again, there's actual installers for these seals, but of course I don't have the tool, so we're just using a socket and making it work. Now you're going to see a lot of grease in this video, putting a lot more grease in here, making sure, like I said, everything is full of grease. Um, you'd rather have more grease than less grease. So this is the best quality I could buy. It's very best. It's cost me like four bucks. <laughs> you guys might be wondering, look, it's pre-rusted. Pre-rusted. You guys have seen it here. Pre-rust. That's what high quality premium brake parts buy you. You might be thinking, Nick, why are you putting on this on your car? Because my car is shit. Actually, you pay more for the rust. Probably, you know what? I probably got charged a premium because there's a little bit of a pre-rust starting. If not, you should send them more money. I should, I should go there and like send them a bottle of wine and like a nice like cheese and cracker platter or something just to show my appreciation. I wanna mention I'm changing the rotor because I'm in here and at this point, it's mine as well, change it. There's no reason why I shouldn't. So we're just torquing it. I can't remember the exact torque spec. I believe it was between 29 and 39 foot pounds. So once you got the rotor and hub mated back together, we're going to clean up the spindle on the car and add more grease. Once again, we're adding more grease. You gotta love it. It's the best thing. So I'm gonna slide the hub and rotor onto the spindle and then grab our packed outer bearing and slide it on and then we're just going in the reverse process of what we did to get the hub and rotor off of the car. All right, so we pretty much got everything back together. We are gonna go ahead and torque this now. There's a little bit of a procedure. It has to be torqued to, I believe, around 22 foot-pounds at a maximum. And while you're torquing it, you wanna move the hub in the direction of the forward motion of your car. So we're gonna be moving it like this as we torque it. As soon as it gets to your 22 foot-pounds, then you back off the nut. 60 degrees, so it's a little bit of a of a process like I mentioned, but that uh, You don't want to Over tighten these ruin the bearings um, So we're going to like I said torque it to seat them bring it the nut back a little bit And then we should be good to go. We can put our cotter pin in put our caliper back on and then put our wheel on make sure there's still no play and then uh, Then we'll, we'll bleed the brakes Make sure you bleed the brakes. <laughs> because we have to take the caliper off, if you're doing it on this car or a similar car like this where there's a hard line for the caliper and you're gonna have air in the system or fluid out of any, anything disconnected from the braking system, make sure you bleed it. So let's keep moving, we're almost there. So we just torqued it. It's a little bit tight, um, which is how it's supposed to be. We're seating everything. And now I like to bring, I like to use a torque wrench. You're not usually supposed to use a torque wrench to back nuts off, but this is very loose, so you don't really have to worry too much. I like to bring it to the point where the bar here is pretty much flat. You know 90 degrees is right up here. 45 degrees is roughly in the middle. Just go a little bit more and that's, Literally, that's all I do. It's kind of just by eye, nothing crazy. So we're gonna do that right now. See right there, it's And that's literally it. You wanna feel it, make sure it's smooth, it's good. There's no weird noises. It's on there. Make sure the nut doesn't come off by hand. Actually, on the other side when I was doing it, I took the cap off and the nut just came off by hand. Um, and the race on the inside was actually spinning freely, so there was definitely a big issue. 
on the driver's side. And it definitely felt worse on the driver's side. So we should be good now. Put some grease in here, put some grease in the cap, put our cotter pin back in with our little do flinky. I don't know what this is called. If you know the name, let me know. A thingamabobber. We're just gonna try and line it up so that you can get the cotter pin in. I think that'll work right there. Once we get the brakes all back together, that is pretty much it. Make sure, like I said, you bleed the brakes and you should be good to go. That's a wrap for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy, crew.